Hi everyone, welcome to part 7. Um, yeah, we made it down the line, so the plugin is pretty much finished and during the review process for the marketplace I came up with some interesting ideas um, that I then added to the plugin in order to provide more functionality. Uh, within the uh, blueprint interface we have a uh, new uh, addition to the uh, external and internal camera and that is using a blend mode in the byte format and a blend time in float format. <clears throat> those two variables are added here and then later used in the script and we'll review how those are used right now. So let's start off with opening all the necessary files here and uh, like before in the rest of the tutorial you basically create a uh, variable to use the problem with the blend mode variable created inside of a file is that if you just create a byte it will not be the correct type so to get the correct type for that when you're inside of this blueprint which is the external camera or the character camera you're going to actually get a um, like before uncheck context sensitive and type in blend with view from this node you can just drag off and then promote with context sensitive enabled it'll just pop up as one of the first options once you promote that to variable that, that will be exposed for you to set up inside your management category and uh, hook up to the uh, interface calls. What this takes care of doing is it makes every camera instance a manual blend mode. Look at that, I just spotted a missing blend mode. So when you do that, um, you're sending the information over to the camera. Now when you send information over to the camera, you're sending a byte because that is what we defined within the uh, within the blueprint interface so the the uh, camera operations component will need to take this information and convert it to a format that the parameter can understand now fortunately all, all you really have to do is drag because it's the same value coming in you just have to drag it into here and it will automatically convert to the correct type from byte to the enum that we're actually using for the camera function. Uh, how does this look in level? Well, in level, you now have the option to select the different ease in and out on a per camera basis. So you can set it to whatever you wish. And you can also change the blend time on the go. And what I did is I ended up using this here because it was such a uh, quick transition needed that I had to lower the blend time to down to 0.1 um, and this is what it looks like hang on let's uh, clean that up let's make this full screen yeah, fill up in it okay here's what we have so all the cameras are currently set to uh, a different timing which works uh, a lot better in by cubic um, we have the slow-mo here Working, working perfectly and then this part here the instant the tr instant transition it's instant in and out so technically you could modify the plugin further to change the in and out process uh, and provide a different out out of the external camera than you provide an in to do that you would just go into the uh, overlap end and uh, modify the blend time here to a different variable that you would use for blend out time. And in the purpose of getting this done, let's just do it. Since this is going out, I'm going to delete this as well and add a blend out. So for right now, we have a blend in time. And then we have a blend in mode and I will add a uh, view target with blend node here and out of this I will just promote the blend time to a variable which we will call 
like before f blend out time and then we have the other one promote to variable and oops that was a control a by the way uh, at the wrong time uh, and then we have this one which is e blend out mode once you compile you will see that the default values here are set but the default values aren't set for the blend out time so let's set that to 0.5 so that we don't have any issues now we can remove the view target with blend node there and uh, move those up into the proper position so we have a blend out we have the time dilation maybe above it and then we have a blend in before blend out and then after that we have the blend out mode which we will drag in at the end and so they're ordered we'll save those compile and save and now that we have those two variables we can just line them up and put them into our nodes line them up okay compile save so now the external camera on overlap end will use these values um, which means that I can go into the level design right and I have this camera here which was set to fade out to fade in at point one I can make the fade out time really long so that it takes a while before it gets back to the character and let's see how that looks like I'm going to uh, skip the rest of the uh, pathway and just go into here and test it and as you can see it's much smoother it doesn't cut out like it did before let's try it with a jump and then that's it perfection all right hopefully that gives you an idea on how to proceed on uh, adding extra things onto this um, I will probably be adding at least another episode down the line to uh, uh, after it has been published to uh, create a different version with the uh, with a recursive code for the checking of the uh, extra camera spawn. So we'll see how that goes when we get there. For right now, just trying to get the plugin published. So uh, we will package this up and uh, do it again. Now, if you're interested in how to package it and all that, uh, there are a few considerations that you need to be aware of, uh, which I've already covered a little bit in the previous tutorial, but let's go over them again. So the controller nodes from the third person blueprint were eventually entirely removed to pass validation. Um, everything is hard coded to a key so that you're not requiring to, you're not required to use the event axis. Um, now this this code is fairly simple you're just checking for keyboard input uh, on tick which is what the axis essentially does when you have an axis input and if that input is true then you do something like get the forward vector and apply the rotation and again you apply you get that rotation from down here which is the script that we created at the beginning of the tutorial se series um, the mouse movement is very much the same so hopefully that explains that now what else did we need to cover here inside the character uh, I think that's it actually so we need to remove that and then you need to make sure that there are no no empty folders at all uh, and that everything is labeled properly including whatever you got from uh, the um, original package needs to have the uh, nomenclature correct not correct per se but something in front to define what it is um, the geometry meshes as well static mesh for SM SM for static mesh um, the materials M for materials where are the materials uh, materials here and then there is another master folder of it right there material instance for materials and material M for material basis so that you know what you're looking at T for textures um, and that's it 
after you do all of that, you usually pass validation rather easily. Um, well, I guess that depends on the quality of your plugin. They do check on that, and uh, uh, they actually rejected the plugin because the camera transitions were too fast, which is kind of uh, a question in itself, right? The plugin allows you to change the camera transitions, so to taste. Um, that should have probably not have been something that needs to be flagged. But um, the next step for me will be creating a little bit of a documentation to go along. So uh, that will be an extra to the tutorial series and it will, it will be part of it, but not really how to use this plugin. All right. Thanks for watching part seven. See you guys in part eight.